Welcome to step 9 of making a top-down adventure game in Pico 8. In this step, we'll add a way to actually win and lose. If you just started Pico 8, you'll need to load your game. Once it's loaded, hit escape and we'll get started. We almost have a fully working game at this point. However, we still need a way for the player to win or lose. We'll accomplish that with the last two sprite flags. We'll make it so that if you touch a tile with sprite flag 6 turned on, you lose. And if you touch a tile with sprite flag 7 turned on, you win. We already have the spike sprite tile with the lose flag turned on, so let's make a sprite tile with the win flag turned on just so we have a way to win our game. Here we go, now let's just turn on sprite flag 7, and now it's a win tile. Let's add it to our map inside the building with the door. Now let's add code to make these tiles work. The first thing we need is a way to keep track of not only if the game is over, but if the game is won or not. In code tab 0, we'll add two variables inside the init function. The first, game win, will be a true false variable that will keep track of whether the player has won or not. At the beginning of the game, it's set to false because you haven't won the game in the beginning. The second, game over, will be a true false variable to track if the game is over or not. If we think about it, this gives us a few different possibilities. With game over and game win both false, the game should just continue as normal. With game over true and game win false, this means the game is over but they didn't win, in other words, they lost. But with game over true and game win true, this means the game is over and they won. Now we need a function to actually change those variables based on where the player moves. Let's make a new code tab at the end. We'll call it win slash lose code. Now we'll start writing a function called check win lose. The first thing we should check is if the player's x, y coordinates are on a win tile. So we check if is tile win p.x p.y. If they are on a win tile, then game win is true and game over is true. But if they're not on a win tile, let's check to see if they're on a lose tile. So we check else if is tile lose p.x p.y. If they are on a lose tile, then game win equals false and game over equals true. Next, we need a function to tell the player if they win or lose. We'll call this function draw win lose. First thing we need to do is reset the camera back to 0, 0 with camera. If you don't give camera an xy coordinate, it resets the camera back to 0, 0. Then, if game win is true, then we tell the player they won. But otherwise, we tell the player they lose. You can create the star glyph by pressing shift s. Now let's add the code to determine when these functions get used. Let's go back to code tab 0 and change our update and draw functions. In the update function, we only want to run update map and move player if the game is not over. So we'll wrap those two lines of code in an if statement to check if the game is not over. Using not in the if statement here checks if game over is not true. Also, since on every update of the game we want to see if the player won or lost, we'll also add check win lose after we run move player. Now in the draw function, we want to draw the game only if the game is not over. But if the game is over, we'll want to run draw win lose. So we'll add the same kind of check here. And that should be it. Let's test to see if we can win or lose our game. Save the game with control S and then run it with control R. First, let's run into some spikes and see if we lose. Yep, and there's the lose screen. We'll restart the game by pressing control R again. This time, let's win. First, we'll get the key. Then we'll go through the door, and there we go, we won, and it's showing the win screen. The only problem is that we have to restart the game manually by pressing Ctrl R. In the last step, we'll add a way for the player to restart the game by themselves when they lose.